Welcome to Web Certain TV. I'm Christina. Today, I'm joining by Paul Broadbury from Richmond Interim. We are going to talk about doing business in Japan. Hello, Paul. Hello, Christina. Thank you for joining me today. It's a pleasure. So, Paul, how many years were you living in Japan?、Um, Christina, I lived in Japan、uh, for almost two years,、uh, 2001 and 2002. And I was there with my family,、mm-hmm. my wife, and two children.、Yeah. And we lived in central Tokyo. Um, I worked for an IT software company.、Uh, we were providing、um, software for the network operators for short message、uh, routing and switching.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, we were,、uh, I would say, fully immersed in the,、uh, the local culture,、yeah. uh, living out in the community.、Yeah. And I had about 150 people working for me, and they were、uh, all Japanese people.、Yeah. And we did business with、uh, major traditional clients,、mm-hmm. and of course, all business was done in Japanese. So, which in itself, for me, I do speak a little Japanese, but it, it creates a number of challenges、mm-hmm. when everything you're doing has to be interpreted. Yeah.、Um, so, that's just a first example、yeah. of perhaps some of the challenges of doing business with、uh, Japan,、yeah. because you're very unlikely to find customers who speak English. Based on your experience from、mm-hmm. the linguistic point of view,、mm-hmm. what kind of difficulties are there for the Westerners who would like to speak Japanese?、Um, I, I th- would say that compared with several other Asian languages,、mm-hmm. Japanese is not too difficult to learn.、Mm-hmm. Um, but some knowledge is really quite essential if you're living there. So, for example, if you jump into a taxi, The taxi driver might know the approximate district, but you reach a point where you have to give the directions to the taxi driver in Japanese, otherwise,、yeah. quite frankly, you're not going to get home.、Right. And doing business in Japan is, is full of many, many examples like that.、Uh, you mentioned the linguistics. It's often, people often joke that I spoke to a Japanese person and they say yes, but actually they didn't say yes, they said hi. And if I was、it's、talking、like、to you, it's, a, it's an acknowledgement.、Yeah. So, they, so, as you're talking, they will say, Hi, hi, eh, hi. It doesn't mean yes. If they were saying yes, they would say, Hi, w a k a r i m a s h i t a which means、ah. I understood you.、Okay. And, that, and you have to go to that point, really.、Um, they, might, they might have senior people at a meeting.、Mm-hmm. Curiously, the senior person may not say anything. The senior person. Uh, would only contribute by being there to show、mm-hmm. the importance of the subject.、Mm-hmm. So it's very easy for、uh, people like ourselves, who are not、mm-hmm. used to,、uh, you know, people who are not used to doing business in Japan,、mm-hmm. for us to think we've reached an agreement.、Yeah. We would be looking for the top person, the person authorized to make the decision. That would be our culture.、Yeah. But quite often, those people don't exist, or even the most senior people will then spend quite a long time consulting、right. with their colleagues. So, if you are making a short visit to Japan, you、yeah. think you've reached an agreement, you come back, and then your potential client wants another meeting to discuss exactly the same thing again. And you're thinking, but I didn't, I already visit you, didn't we already reach agreement? But actually, no, that was just the first round of discussions. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you have to give them time to do something called nemawashi, which is、uh, consensus decision making. And、right. that, that takes time、uh, to happen. So, those are the sorts of miscues that、yeah. we might get、yeah. uh, uh, coming from, say, the UK or from, from Europe,、mm-hmm. uh, where, where in fact we're at a quite different stage in the process、mm-hmm. to where we think we are.、Uh, and that then becomes a misalignment、yeah. uh, with the customer potentially.、Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really making sense. So, it's like a collective decision making、mm-hmm. instead of here, if you have spoken to the Uh, senior position person is more like they, that person would make the decision, but in Japan,、mm-hmm. it's rather the other way around. It's、mm-hmm. kind of everyone got a vote towards that issue, and at the end, they reach a decision, then reach out to you to、yes. let you know what's the outcome of this、uh, discussion. Yes, yes, and you have to allow time for、yeah. that to happen, which might mean. That you have to visit several times,、yeah. or your agent may have to visit several times. In Japan,、um, business relationships are、uh, very much based on personal relationships、mm-hmm. um, if you're selling any kind of service, really.、Yeah. And it's quite possible that to break into the Japanese market, you would need somebody to introduce you. 
Right. And, I, and, and you know, I've heard it explained mm -hmm. that it really goes back to the days of the samurai. Oh. And I, as a, perhaps a samurai, would, would introduce somebody to you as the Lord. Oh, and okay. If, and, and this person is expected to behave in a certain way, mm -hmm. and I will vouch for this person. I'll say, you know, oh Lord, this, this person here is a good person to work with. Actually, if then this person fails, I have to take responsibility so, for everything that person has done. Yeah. And so the way that that uh, shows like that, itself yeah. is, is, to, is to often work through an introduction agent. Not always, but it's quite common and the agent yeah. then, you, you clearly pay the agent, yeah. and the agent then will, will vouch for you with the customer. Just like a guarantor? Um, a guarant they're a guarantor of your worthiness to do business yeah. as a reliable supplier yeah. from that point of view. They don't financially underwrite what you do, yeah. but they will say that you are a good company to work for. And if there are any problems, they will take responsibility in an in an okay. honor sense. Okay, that's, okay. that's so that is an, an extra, perhaps some extra formalities yeah. that you might not find working with um, in other situations. Let's say. Yeah. So so that means if anyone would like to do business in Japan, they can't just simply say, "Okay, um, I'm going to do my own business." Try to find some contacts. Try to find some customers. That would not work. They need to get some agency to help them to introduce them. <clears throat> I, I I think if I if we were trying to sell mm -hmm. a really big brand, mm -hmm. we might not need somebody to introduce us. Yeah. But if we were a, a medium size or smaller company, particularly yeah. one which is not really known in Japan. Yeah then almost certainly we would need an agent. And for, for practical reasons, mm -hmm. it, it isn't just possible to jump on a plane, fly, mm -hmm. fly to Narita, yeah. and, and just call, ring people up and call on people. Yeah. And first of all, unless you can speak Japanese anyway, yeah. uh, and then somebody has to introduce you. So for, for, as, for practical reasons as well, it's common to work through an agent. Mm -hmm. And that agent would take a percentage of everything you sell, would be normal. <clears throat> but since it seems like a trust mm -hmm. is playing a really important part mm -hmm. in the uh, in the business deal, so mm -hmm. once we get connected with the the potential customer, mm -hmm. how do you build up this trust? Is that difficult? I I think that it's important to deliver on your commitments mm -hmm. at the quality that is required. Yeah. And it's important to understand the focus Japanese people have on quality. Yeah. And I've seen so many companies, a product which is perfectly suitable for, let's say, the UK, yeah. may not sell in Japan. We perhaps have this notion that if I pay a high price, I get high quality, mm -hmm. but I can compromise. Mm -hmm. Somehow I'll go for half price and yeah. I can live with half quality. Yeah. I think that concept would not, would not translate in yeah. Japan. They would, whatever they were buying, they would expect perfect, per, high quality, yeah. and, and as a supplier mm -hmm. to Japan, I would expect potentially many, many, many meetings to discuss the quality mm -hmm. and any defects that they had uh, found. Mm -hmm. We may not think they're defects, but they may say they're a defect. And one of the common phrases, the common questions, was always, "Have you examined the root cause?" It so commonly would appear. Your homework, and we would say actions, yeah. your, your shkadai, your homework, yeah. is to find the root causes yeah. of the problems yeah. and give us a meet, go to a meeting, give us a report on how these root causes have been fixed and tested so that we will never see those again. And it's part of the game of doing business. Is that like ongoing or is it just a really intensive at the beginning when you're first set up? I, I, I think that once trust is fully uh, yeah. built up, then actually they can, the, the Japanese people can be very easy to do business with. And it involves, mm -hmm. you know, lots of drinks in the evening oh. and, and social <laughs> events. Uh, and they're, they're by and large, you know, at a personal level, everybody yeah. I worked with were very, very pleasant people. If your project starts to get into difficulty, if you've mm -hmm. got shipping delays, uh, if there are quality problems, you can expect these sort of escalations. Yeah. And they would expect that 
you know, to have involvement right up to managing director level mm -hmm. or, or even board level of a major mm -hmm. company, uh, they would expect somebody very senior to fly out to Japan to mm -hmm. explain personally and to apologize for the problems. Yeah. Even if perhaps we didn't see them as problems, as a yeah. customer, they would expect you to apologize in person. Yeah. And these things can lead to extra costs in doing business with Japan. But once you have built up the, cost, the, the trust, yeah. um, then the machine runs, can run very, very smoothly. And I've even had cases where, you know, a customer has said, we, we, we must pay you. And we've said, but we haven't delivered yet. Ah, but the contract said we would pay you in May. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. You can pay me in May. That's all right. I'll deliver in June. But yeah. they, because of the relationship, they wanted to pay us. So there is not that's... always the same linkage between yeah. delivery and payment. The relationship is more important. And that's, that's amazing. I would not expect, you know, like, if we haven't delivered a work in this country, then you get paid as... Mm. The contract term stays. Because we agreed, uh, we, yeah. would, we, we would get Pay paid in May. Delivery. We might be running late, yeah. but still, I, I had an urgent phone call from a customer of a major Japanese company yeah. who said the schedule said we would pay you in May. Please give us the details of your bank account. And that was very important for him, yeah. that he paid us on, on, on the original time scale, yeah. even though we were running quite late. I think it is also back to the fact of their culture. It's about a trust. Mm-hmm. Is how you have to keep your promise. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. uh, that's something I really admire uh, about, the, uh, about the Japanese culture, and that they really pay attention to details. Um, I, th I think something else as well that's deep in the culture yeah. is there is an absolute need to do your best. Yeah. <clears throat> and so you and I might be coming into the office on the morning, yeah. and I might say to you, oh, have a good day, what time do you finish? But they would say, let's do our best today. Gambari Masho, let's yeah. do our best today. Yeah. And then when we left, I might say to you, did you do your best today? And you say, yes, I did my best. That's oh, you must be very tired. It must be very stressful to yeah. work in Japan. Otsukara <laughs> Samadeshita, <laughs> you must be very tired. Otsukara yeah. Samadeshita. Yeah. So that, that, that's this idea that always you're, you're committed and you do your best. And then yeah. you get into this game of... You won't go home until the president goes home, but the president oh, won't yes, go home I have until, heard of this until, you know, and so yeah. you end up facing each other down at the end of the day. Yeah. So <laughs> and you leave at about 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. Kind of necessary. And I've had yeah. clients turn up at eight, nine o'clock at night for a meeting unannounced. Yeah. And then yeah. you finish, oh, we're very worried about something. Yeah. And then you have to keep your secretary back. You have to keep your, the interpreter back yeah. in the evening. And then you finish at one or two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And that's, this is all about this, um, you know, discussing problems and how yeah. problems can be fixed. And but I guess it's also a process of building the trust to, yes. to, to show your commitment uh, absolutely. Uh, to this deal. Yes, yeah. it is exactly that. Yeah. It's about showing commitment to the deal. Absolutely yeah. right. And I think from the whole society, the kind of uh, all their life is about commitment, like say, um, I have heard, you know, it's really unusual for the Japanese employees to change their jobs. It's kind of like they start somewhere and then they end up with that company. In a traditional for, company, that's yeah, absolutely true. Yeah, mm -hmm. for so many years, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which you probably won't think that that's something we would do in this country, mm -hmm. especially for, uh, like, say, for for marketing. Mm -hmm. Marketing industry is quite common. People change job a mm -hmm. few years. But but the the other side of that is. Yeah that it becomes a contract uh, with the employer. Mm -hmm. So that in the traditional companies, that, that, um, that employer would look after you for the whole of your working life. You yeah, could even true. be in a company apartment. Yeah. Uh, even when you become um, you know, quite old and not, not so smart, they would still keep you <laughs> yeah. employed. You might, they might put you looking out of the window. Mm -hmm. That's often a comment. The older people, yeah. as they get older, they move towards the window. <laughs> Uh, and they just spend their day looking out of the window, potentially. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's all part of the, the deal, the, yeah. the, 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 uh, the contract, if you like, with the yeah. employer. Yeah. So you, you, you do your best. You do your duty to the employer. You are loyal. You yeah. work whatever hours are required, you know, as yeah. long as is necessary. But the reverse side of that contract, the other side of that contract, is that the employer will take care of you. 
Yeah. And some major Japanese companies have completely gone bust. Mm. When the president has apologized for uh, the company going bust, he mm. might say, has said, but you know, we did not make redundant any single employee and mm. therefore we kept our contract. Yeah. And there are also difficulties in making people redundant in Japan. Yeah. It, 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 voluntary redundancy or voluntary release is okay, but if it's compulsory, um, the government potentially will not see the fact you're losing money as sufficient reason um, mm. for a company to make people redundant. Because that in many ways is breaking the social contract. So that's really should be if any company from the Western world want to set up in Japan, they probably want to look into that area mm -hmm. as well. You mm -hmm. know, potentially mm -hmm. they could make, make a really um, terrible impact on mm -hmm. their brand. Mm -hmm. and, and another, to extend on that perhaps a little yeah. bit, when a person in Japan comes to work for an employer, yeah. their loyalty is also to the person who gave them their job. Right. And so if I was working for you, my loyalty would be to you, right. as well as the company. If you got fired for some reason, I might resign because <laughs> my loyalty was to you. And I've seen this many times where, unfortunately, uh, I've seen people who have got fired mm -hmm. and several other people will resign immediately. Mm -hmm. Because somehow they were their loyalty was to the person yeah. who was who was unfortunately they were like a, a team let go they yeah. were but it but it's a the personal commitment was to yeah. that person That's... and therefore there can be sort of secondary consequences that you, you know I've lost some really good people that way yeah. and I've said why don't you stay you know unfortunately Mister So and So has had to leave why don't you stay well unfortunately my loyalty is to Mister So and So. And if he yeah. is leaving, then I will leave. Yeah. And the the relationship mm -hmm. with that person was more important than their own mm. income with our company. Which is a little bit difficult for us to understand. Is like it's very good yeah. if you have if you are lucky enough. Yeah. To um, have people work for you that you have employed. Oh uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. And and uh, my. Uh, I had a Japanese PA, of course, yeah. when I when I worked in Tokyo. Yeah. And she say, well, I, she actually said to me, I would like to leave soon. I'm getting married, and I'd like to leave. Yeah. But I will not leave until you leave. Oh, that's so nice. So she 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 would, uh, even though she'd moved away from Tokyo, she mm -hmm. was living in Yokohama. She was traveling two or three hours into the office mm -hmm. every day. Um, she's she to her, it would be unthinkable to leave before I had returned to the UK. Wow, that's nice. Be, that because is... that is the protocol. That's nice. But for a Western employer it's or a, a Western company, these links are invisible. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's possible to make mistakes quite easily yeah. for us. That's true. So just to wrap up for the interview today, mm -hmm. is there any suggestions, advice you could give to a small, medium-sized business when they decide to enter into the Japanese market? I would say uh, a few simple steps. Mm -hmm. First of all, understand the marketplace. Yeah. Expect to have to travel to Japan <laughs> several times. Yes. Probably find a, a partner or an agent who can yeah. introduce you. Mm -hmm. Try to understand who is making the decision for, for the customer. Um, it's likely to be a group of people. Yeah. Be ready to make quite a large investment mm -hmm. in meeting people who appear a little bit unconnected but actually mm -hmm. are quite influential around mm -hmm. the person who you think might be the leader. Yeah. Look very carefully and understand what means I heard you and what yeah. means yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, expect to have a very strong focus on quality and be ready to answer those questions in real detail mm -hmm. and invest the time. But the returns can be extremely high. There are 120 million people live in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, by and large, they have significant disposable income. Mm -hmm. If something becomes a craze, it can really, really take off and you could be very successful. 
and I think that's probably where I'd leave it really there's there's too much to say in a short video yeah. so I think maybe that's the place to leave it All a right. few words of advice